We left off last time with Ronald Reagan, who is one of the great heroes of Republican, the Republican Party, and also of the more conservative part of America, I would say. Uh, he did some very good things, but when they talk about economics, uh, when they talk about foreign affairs, for some reason, he is unlike Jimmy Carter that he replaced. Everything stuck to Jimmy Carter, whether or not he had anything to do with it. Whether Reagan did have something to do with it or not, nothing seems to be associated with him. So there are two parts to Ronald Reagan. I'm starting with about uh, slide 34 in there with the text under Nixon and on. And you have to break it into domestically, what he did particularly economically, and then foreign affairs overseas, which really completely messed up Carter. So let's see what happened with Ronald Reagan. Uh, talked about his biography, a little strange uh, background, family background, but a well-experienced politician and a very famous movie star as well. So he is the first uh, really blending of Hollywood and politics, which has continued to today. Don't forget, after Ronald Reagan as governor of California, a little bit after that, you have Arnold Schwarzenegger, who was governor of California, and also fairly well liked as a governor, both by Republicans and Democrats. So let's move into Reaganomics. Reaganomics, also called supply side economics, also called trickle down economics. This is important. Pay attention to this. Ronald Reagan pioneered this. We just did it again a year and a half ago with Donald Trump. Exactly the same policy. Ronald Reagan was elected. His, one of his campaign slogans was government is not the solution. Government is the problem. And his goal was to downsize government, to cut federal government back. How do you do this? The same way Andrew Jackson did, you cut taxes. How do you cut taxes? Uh, the philosophy behind this is if you eliminate government regulation and cut taxes, private businesses will grow. They create more jobs that will give more revenue to the government, which is often true. This has a lot of truth to it. The question is, what parts of government do you cut and how much? So what he did was cut taxes. This is what he campaigned on, elected overwhelmingly. He cut taxes 25%, income taxes, in three years. Huge tax cut, okay? Um, in order to balance this, of course, because when, like everybody knows, when you have less income coming in, then you have to cut some of your expenses. He balanced this, and this is the part we don't hear about so much with Ronald Reagan, by cutting social programs. He cut the food stamp program. He cut jo government jobs, which is debatable how good that is. He cut transit programs, transportation programs. He cut student loans as well. He also deregulated a lot of federal lands. Does any of this sound familiar? Okay, so look at slides 35, supply side economics. His own budget director, I remember this well, don't ask me why I remember this name of all others, but his name was David Stockman. And David Stockman was asked about this, how do you balance the books? And David Stockman answered by saying, and I quote, voodoo economics, smoke and mirrors. We're going to do this by magic. You can't do it. If you have less income coming in, you have to cut something. So look at those slides carefully. Okay, supply side economics, that's the percentage of income taxes that were cut. On slide number 36, you will see the direct result. If you see where the lines diverge, it is exactly around 1980 when Reagan was elected. So the split in wealth in this country, the poor get poor and the rich get richer, uh, Ronald Reagan, you can pin it straight on Ronald Reagan. The lines diverged at that point and they are still diverging because Donald Trump did exactly the same 
thing. If you look at the next slide, 37, this is not my information. This is from the Government Accounting Office. This is his own people. These are neutral federal employees. And this is what Trump's program has done in the last year and a half or so, last two years, okay? Um, I would love to get $1,000 back from the federal government, which is probably about what we got. So everybody gets some tax relief. But the more you make, the more money you get back. These are actual numbers. I am not making this stuff up, okay? In addition to this, you can draw your own conclusions. In, your, in addition to this, he also increased doubled the defense budget at the same time. So you're cutting taxes, you're doubling defense. The money has to come from someplace as well. Um, there is some argument to be made, absolutely, for cutting taxes on the wealthy will boost the economy. The wealthy have to take their money, they have to invest it someplace, they expand their companies, uh, they will buy more stuff, and it will eventually trickle down. There is an argument to be made for that. There is also an argument to be made for the fact that the amount that trickles down is not enough. If you have the 1%, they cannot raise the 99%. It's not enough. So you have to draw your own conclusions. Um, you can do your own research on this. It did not work under Reagan. He had to balance the budget by cutting social programs massively. Social programs help the lower end of the economic scale. They do not help the 1%. They don't need federal help. The direct result of, as it was called, voodoo economics, is by far, hands down, the largest deficit, budget deficits, negative spending, borrowing, in peacetime, other than our wars, World War I and World War II, to the tune of, at that time, over $200 billion a year, which was a lot more money than, than it is now. Uh, the supply-side economics didn't stop the deficits there were other factors, but the key thing was you reduce taxes, you double defense spending, the books don't balance. As a result, Reagan raised taxes in his second term after he was reelected. That's the part we rarely hear about in Reaganomics. It didn't match up. He had to raise taxes. Direct effect of Reaganomics was growing inequality of wealth. The top 1% in America doubled. The top 20% owned 80% of the wealth in America. The middle 60% did go up, did improve a little bit by about 5%. The lowest 20% went down 6%. Um, environmentally, he also canceled parts of the Clean Water and Clean Air Act, uh, again, to deregulate business. Federal lands were open to timber, mining, offshore oil drilling. Um, lots of things happened. So you can do your own research on Reaganomics. We have just done it again. Of course, coronavirus came in before we attempted to balance the budget on it. So we'll see what happens with that. Reagan had no coronavirus to deal with. The other half of Reaganomics, the part two of it, is his foreign affairs. And this, again, is a very mixed bag. He campaigned on the slogan, Make America Great Again, basically. Uh, he was an optimist. We desperately needed optimism after Jimmy Carter and the Iran hostage crisis. And Reagan did restore American influence, restore American image and prestige abroad. Um, he was a cold warrior. He did not want to help communist expansion. Uh, containment was definitely his policy. But again, if you are going to expand overseas and expand America's influence and prestige overseas, that costs money. See number one above. Uh, how do you balance the budget with this? So Republicans who are have traditionally been um, small federal government and balanced budget people under Reagan become very 
large federal government in some areas and don't balance the budget at all. And this has been off and on since then, and certainly under Trump. Um, Trump, one of his heroes is Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan is a huge hero of the Republican Party today. Okay, so what goes on overseas? Uh, slides 38, 39, Iran-Contra. This was in 1984. It was definitely under Ronald Reagan. What was going on in Central America, particularly in Nicaragua? Uh, we have huge problems with Central American migrants today. This goes back to the 1980s and Ronald Reagan. There were absolutely uh, guerrillas on the ground in uh, Central America. Central America was largely controlled by pretty ruthless dictators at the time. And there were guerrilla operations trying to overthrow the Central American governments. Some of them were communist, some of them were not. Um, Congress passed a law prohibiting United States money to support any of the right-wing dictatorships in Central America, including the Nicaraguan Contras, who were connected with communism. Okay, so how do you get the money if you can't balance the budget? We found out later that the Colonel, and I think his picture is on number 39, Colonel Oliver North, who was a member of our National Security uh, Council, was selling, follow this, it's complicated, uh, was selling American missiles and weapons Two, of all people, Iran. Why were you selling missiles and weapons to Iran? Iran had just held our people hostage for 444 days, death to America, burning of American flags, burning presidents in effigy. Um, number one, we got six more American hostages out. The Iranians held them in Lebanon. We got them out and we got money, we got cold cash. This money was given to the Nicaraguan Contras, uh, no, I'm sorry, to fund their actions, basically. Uh, these were given to guerrilla groups in Central America who supported the dictatorships. So, Money for missiles through the Mideast because Congress had forbidden us from giving support to these right-wing dictators directly. We went through the Mideast. Colonel Oliver North, when we found out later, was investigated by the U.S. Senate. And he said, I, was, I only followed orders. That's all I did is only follow orders. So the question is, how much did Reagan know and when did he know it? And we don't know the answer to that. At some point, he must have known something because Oliver North did not do this on his own initiative. The directions had to come from somebody. Uh, Reagan's vice president, George W. Bush, head of the CIA, how much did he know and when did he know it? This is what the CIA does overseas. The Iranian Contras, the guerrilla groups who were fighting the dictatorships, um, found themselves being outgunned. Uh, they raised money mainly by smuggling cocaine into the United States and selling it for big bucks, particularly in the LA and Southern California area. So there were long-term reper repercussions about this, but we don't know. How much did Reagan and Bush know? When did they know? It's something, they had to know something, okay? Um, 4041 are great spoofs on Reagan's new missile defense program. Uh, remember, this is the 1980s. So how do you defend against the Russian nuclear threat? There had been a drawdown under Carter and under uh, Nixon, famously. They began to build up again. We began to distrust each other again. Um, and there was talk at the time of building a dome some kind of missile protective dome over the United States. I don't know if it's possible now. It certainly wasn't possible in the 1980s uh, of sending missiles into uh, uh, weapons into space that could shoot down missiles coming into the United States. All of this 
was at the time imaginary. How much of it's possible today? I don't know. It was certainly not possible in the 1980s. And coincidentally, the original movie of Star Wars came out when Reagan was president. So everybody immediately called his defense plans Star Wars, basically pie in the pot high in the sky stuff. But we did increase defense spending in other areas a huge amount. Okay, slides 43, 44 are Lebanon. 1982, of course, in the Mideast, the United States has always supported Israel. Uh, it is the only non-Arab state. It is Jewish and it is the uh, one of the few functioning democracies in the Mideast. We supported the Israeli invasion of southern Lebanon. Why did Israel invade southern Lebanon? Because Lebanon and Israel share a border and uh, Lebanese guerrillas were shooting missiles into Israel and attacking Israeli settlements. They fought back. This is a civil war that ignites in Lebanon between different factions in Lebanon. Lebanon was torn apart. We sent U.S. Marines, about 500 or 600 U.S. Marines, to keep the peace in Lebanon. And they were housed in a hotel complex. No one uh, predicted, this was unknown at the time, but suicide bombers were a, a new thing. And one of the first suicide bombings was of the Marine barracks in Beirut, Lebanon in 1984. And you see the pictures there. The suicide bomber immediately killed 239 Marines. Our reaction, the United States immediately pulled out. So this is another incident where we reacted to high death rates by pulling out. We pulled out of Vietnam. We pulled out of Lebanon. When we pulled out of Lebanon, the Mideast was entirely more chaotic than it had been before we entered there. So the Mideast is left to its own devices, pretty much. Um, we forget about Lebanon with Ronald Reagan. Was it a good thing to go in? I don't know. Was it a good thing to pull out? I don't know either, but it created chaos. His one huge success overseas, slide 45, 46, 47, was detente, basically, um, a drawdown of tensions in the Cold War. 1986, Reagan initiated a summit meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev, who was premier of Russia. The two of them personally got along very well. Gorbachev happened to be a peacenik. He did not believe that Russia should be um, armed and dangerous. He wanted to create peace. Uh, so did Reagan. And their agreement was that all missiles were removed from Europe, from both sides. At this point, we had between us, between us and the Soviet Union, 50,000 nuclear warheads. All you need is about 20 to destroy life on Earth. But this is our policy. If we have more than they do, they'll be afraid to touch us. Russia also left Afghanistan at the same time. They were losing badly to the Afghan uh, guerrillas. And Reagan went to Berlin. You can see him there. If you know, if you look in back of him, the, the symbol of Ber Berlin, the Brandenburg Gate, so you know immediately where he is, and gave a very famous speech in Berlin that said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, tear down the Berlin Wall, dividing the Soviet eastern half and the democratic western half of Berlin. And the wall was torn down almost immediately. Did Reagan tear the wall down? There's a famous picture of him there actually <laughs> tearing down the wall. Um, no, this was happening anyway. It was a process and Reagan happened to be the president on watch, but he did absolutely encourage it. So Eastern Europe, by 1990, by the time Reagan leaves office, has thrown off communist rule, and all those countries in Eastern Europe are now free and fairly functioning democracies. Slovakia, Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Romania, Bulgaria, etc., Serbia, Croatia. There's a dozen countries there. They are no longer under Soviet control. And this happened by 1990, and it happened under Gorbachev. 
Russia today, of course, it keeps talking about um, getting their empire back. Whether that's possible or not, we'll, we'll see what happens. But this is when Russia lost her empire. Okay, so Reagan has good and bad sides. He did some wonderful things. He did some pretty sketchy things. For some reason, we always remember the wonderful things and we forget the negative things. Poor Jimmy Carter did some very good things and there were some horrible things that happened on his watch. We always remember the bad things. That's history. The next slide, 48 and, and 49, are Bush, um, I'm sorry, George Bush Sr., Ronald Reagan's vice president, who ran on the Republican Party ticket and won fairly overwhelmingly in 1988 after Reagan retires after his two terms. George Bush, the Bushes, uh, of course, strong Texas connection. None of them were born here, by the way. They are from Connecticut. George Bush, governor of Texas and latest son, president, um, wealthy son of wealthy father, George Bush Sr., wealthy son of wealthy political father. So this is a long line, a dynasty of very wealthy families who have very strong political connections. Um, George Bush's junior grandfather was in Congress. So George Bush Sr., his father, had been head of the CIA for a long time as vice president. He was recently died a year or two ago, a very good guy, uh, a very honest guy. Um, he was the youngest Navy pilot in World War II. He flew on 58 mi missions, crashed four times and sur survived somehow. So he is a genuine war hero. Had a political career after that, was interested in politics, and he runs for president after Reagan retires after two terms. His campaign slogan, read my lips, no new taxes. And this famously came back to bite him in the rear end because the first thing he had to do because Reaganomics created such big deficits in the federal government, his first year in office, Bush had to raise taxes. The minute he did, he sealed his political future. Nobody's gonna vote for him. You just said, read my lips, no new taxes, and then you raised taxes. It did not end the recession going on. The deficits continue. It was not enough to balance the books because of Reagan's extreme tax cuts and extreme spending, particularly on defense. Um, he is also a cold warrior. Remember, he headed the CIA. But he doesn't have Russia to deal with too much. Uh, the Soviet Union has collapsed. Uh, Russia became mildly capitalist, became somewhat democratic. Uh, he had nuclear disarmament treaties with Boris Yeltsin, who was premier of Russia after Gorbachev. He does have problems in the Mideast, which was left in chaos by Reagan and by earlier conditions. And this is the first Gulf War, the Persian Gulf War in 1991 under Bush. Iraq, under our good friend Saddam Hussein, a surprise invasion of tiny little Kuwait. America led a coalition that quickly freed Kuwait. And then what do you do? Do you continue on into Iraq and overthrow Saddam Hussein? Bush made the decision, pull out, leave it alone. Why did he pull out? Because uh, we went in later, of course, under his son. Why did we pull out? Because he rightfully feared that it would throw the country into chaos and create a brutal civil war, which it did. We had half a million troops in Kuwait at one point, but we pull out quickly. Other things that Bush did very famously, uh, he passed the Americans with Disability Acts in 1991. There would be no discrimination in hiring and public accommodations. This is when we get uh, ramps and wheelchair access to everything by federal law. He was kind of reluctant to sign it because of the money it would cost, but Bob Dole, 
who was a disabled vet, who was in Congress and a World War II veteran as well, is the guy who really pushed it. So it's really Bob Dole's bill, but Bush also signed off on it. 1992 election comes along. First term is over. George Bush knows uh, he's lost the election before it even starts because he said no new taxes and he raised taxes. The 1992 election is a clear win for Bill Clinton. Okay, I'm going to stop there because it's about half an hour and uh, finish up with Clinton and take you up until 9-11 next time. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks.